The Uyghurs are an ethnic group that mainly reside in Xinjiang province in China. They are currently in the media spotlight due to the repression they face at the hands of the Chinese Communist government. But they have called northwestern China their home for more than a thousand years. Their history extends even further back than that. Like many other groups of steppe people, they have experienced things such as the establishment of a huge nomadic empire to the mass migration of the entire ethnic group. The ancient history of the Uyghurs is an especially contested topic amongst historians. This is not helped by the fact that the early history of the Uyghurs is murky and not very well documented, making it tough to trace with certainty. As a result, we will begin our story in the 7th century, when the Uyghurs lived in Mongolia. During this time, they were under the control of the Gok Turks, who had established the Turkic Khaganat. This was a huge empire which stretched from Manchuria in the east to the Black Sea in the west. But its status as a nomadic confederation of various tribes left it vulnerable to inner tribal rivalries. And this is essentially what brought down the Turkic Khaganat in the end, because in 744, the Uyghurs ganged up with the Basmils and the Karluks to take out the Gok Turks. Subsequently, the Uyghurs took out the other two groups to take sole power and establish the Uyghur Khaganat. Ruling from its capital in Urdu Balik, the Uyghur Khagan quickly expanded his authority all over Mongolia. Eventually, they came into conflict with their two main adversaries the Tibetan Empire to the south and the Yenisei Kyrgyz to the north. To the east, they established fairly cordial relations with the Tang Dynasty. However, it should be mentioned that the Tang Dynasty often had to pay tribute to the Uyghur Khagan in response for their help in putting down rebellions, even if sometimes this help wasn't even asked for in the first place. This just goes to show how much power the Uyghur Khaganat had that they could impose themselves on the Tang. Up until this point, the Uyghurs adhered to Buddhism and Tengrism, but an important shift occurred in the middle of the 8th century, where during the reign of its Khagan Bogu, the Uyghur Khaganat converted to Manichaeism a development that must have been helped in some way shape or form by the good relations the Uyghurs had with the Sogdians, an Iranian people living in the Tarim Basin, whose official religion was Manichaeism. The exchange of cultural transmission does not end with religion, because it is very likely that the old Uyghur alphabet was adapted from the Sogdian alphabet. The 9th century started very well for the Uyghur Khaganat, Territorially, they expanded to the south at the expense of the Tibetans and thereby secured control of the Hoshi Corridor, a vital piece of the Silk Road which connected Sogdia to China. But the Khaganat quickly descended into chaos and anarchy by the 830s, as a result of ecological factors mixed with turmoil at the royal court. In 840, the empire suddenly fell to the Yenisei Kyrgyz, and the subsequent enmity between the victorious Kyrgyz and the defeated Uyghurs forced the latter to migrate southward. We have to remember that during this period, it was not uncommon for nomadic tribes to wholesale migrate to new territories. Upon heading south from their Mongolian homelands, the Uyghurs split up into two groups that went in different directions. One group settled around the Hershey Corridor and established their own state known as the Ganzu Uyghur Kingdom. The Ganzu Uyghurs would go on to lose their state in 1036 to the Tanguts, but the group remains in the region up until the present day. Today, 
They are known as the Yellow Uyghurs, or the Uyghurs with this particular spelling. And they don't practice Islam, instead they retain their Tibetan Buddhist beliefs. The other group settled around the Tarim Basin, establishing the Kingdom of Kocho. Initially, they also practiced Buddhism and Manichaeism. But the historical experience of the Uyghurs living under the Kingdom of Kocho was very different. This is because they came in contact with a bunch of different peoples in the Tarim Basin, including the aforementioned Sogdians and the Indo-European Tocharians. This mixing of cultures between a Turkic people and an Iranian people and the Indo-European people means that the type of culture that the Tarim Basin Uyghurs were going to have was going to be very different from the Yellow Uyghurs or even from their old Uyghur ancestors living in Mongolia. This divergence between the Uyghurs can be seen even on a phenotypical level, where the Uyghurs presently living in Xinjiang look as though they have far more Caucasian admixture as opposed to the Yellow Uyghurs who look much more East Asian phenotypically. One of the main rivals that the Kocho had was the Karakhanid Khanat. In the mid 10th century, the Karakhanids, under the rule of Satuk Bughra Khan, converted to Islam. And so, the Islamification of Xinjiang and the Tarim Basin specifically was to begin in a major way. Having said that, the Uyghurs still clung on to their old religious beliefs of Tengrism, Buddhism, Manichaeism, and even Nestorian Christianity. It would still be at least a few centuries before the Uyghurs of the Tarim Basin would become Muslim. Before that was to happen, the region would witness the rise and fall of the Mongol Empire. It is generally believed that the Uyghurs seem to have enjoyed favour under the Mongols. The Kingdom of Kocho, however, was initially allowed to be a vassal of the Mongols, but in the 14th century, it was subsumed into the Chagatai Khanat, a subdivision and subsequently a successor state to the Mongol Empire. The Xinjiang region would continue to be ruled by descendants of Chagatai Mongol rulers until 1705. The rule under the Chagatai Khanat was hugely consequential for the Uyghurs living in Xinjiang for two main reasons. Firstly, the Tarim Basin had become Muslim majority by the 15th century. This was helped by the fact that the Chagatai Khanat and its offshoots had themselves embraced Islam. Secondly, and also by the 15th century, the Chagatai language started to become the lingua franca of the entire region and replaced Old Uyghur as the main language used by the Uyghurs of Xinjiang. In fact, modern Uyghur is actually descended from Chagatai, which is now an extinct language. This just goes to show another difference between the Uyghurs of Xinjiang and the Yellow Uyghurs, whose language is a direct descendant of Old Uyghur. In 1705, the Xinjiang region would come under the rule of the Zungars. The Zunga Khanat would only last until 1755, when it was conquered by the Chinese Qing dynasty, who subsequently carried out the Zungar genocide for the next three years. Half a million Zungars, mainly living in the northern half of Xinjiang, were wiped out. This changed the demographics in the region to naturally favour the Uyghurs. From this point on, the Uyghurs of Xinjiang came under the rule of the Qing dynasty even though the Qing did allow a semi-autonomous Uyghur region within Xinjiang under the rule of the Kumul Khanat from 1696 all the way until 1930. Throughout this period, the region was not yet known officially as Xinjiang. The southern portion of it, around the Tarim Basin, was referred to by a variety of names, such as al Shahr, meaning six cities, or Nanlu, meaning the Southern Circuit, whilst the northern area was called Zungaria. For the next 100 years, 
the Qing conflicted with the followers of the Sufi political leader Afak Khoja in Xinjiang. Even though this resistance was eventually squashed by the Qing by the 1860s, roughly around the same time, the even more dangerous Dungan Revolt began. This was a revolt started in western China by the Hui Muslims. In the midst of all the chaos it created, in 1865, Kashgaria, or as it was known by the locals, Yeti Shahar, was established under the rule of the Tajik or Uzbek adventurer Yakub Beg. This state was even officially recognized by the Ottomans and the British. But it seems like the local population of the Tarim Basin, including the Uyghurs, did not like their new foreign rulers from Central Asia. In the end, the Qing dynasty reconquered the region in 1877. And in 1884, the Chinese government officially named the province Xinjiang, meaning New Frontier, a name which is disliked by many Uyghurs living in the region who prefer the name East Turkestan. But for more on Uyghur history post-1884, check out my collab partner History with Hilbert's video who picks the story up from then until today. Alright guys, this was a fun little video. Talking about fun videos, I started a brand new channel and it has nothing to do with history so forgive me if this is unprofessional. But if you're into watching videos of delicious and juicy street food, hit up my new channel Street Food Bites. As many of you would be able to imagine, growing a YouTube channel from scratch is like being at the foot of a mountain and knowing you have to climb that gigantic monster in front of you. Like I know I'm gonna climb it, but I know it's also gonna be so long, you know what I'm trying to say? So your support at this early stage will be very, very, very much appreciated. As usual, big thank you to my patrons for being awesome and generous. Check out the Patreon link in the video bio if you want to support the channel financially. Until next time, peace!